Hello, everyone. My name is Sue Lee. Um, I'm a senior bioinformatics scientist at the Department of Biomedical Informatics, Harvard Medical School. Um, I'm also part of the 40 Nucleum Data Coordination and Integration Center and the Clinical Genome Analysis Platform. Um, I will talk about how we test, run, and monitor software tools and workflows on the AWS cloud using the tool that we developed called Tibana. Um, so Tibana is an open source uh, tool. Uh, we have a GitHub repo. Uh, many people contributed to it. Um, it was originally developed as a uh, part of the 40 and DCIC data processing um, unit. And we decided to uh, share it with the public. And we have uh, published a paper about it in 2019. It's already a little outdated. Uh, we have added uh, many more new features. Uh, the comparison is also outdated because other uh, tools also evolved quite a bit since then. So then uh, what is Tibana? Uh, basically, it runs uh, workflows on the AWS cloud. Uh, it can run CWL workflows, uh, Widow workflows, and also bash commands. Um, so then how is it different from other workflow uh, managers? Um, so I think one, uh, good way to uh, do that is to, to mention what Tibana does and what Tibana doesn't do. Um, so uh, let me first go over what Tibana does. Um, first of all, it launches a compute environment for a job. Uh, basically, this means that it launches a virtual machine with a temporary disk space attached. On AWS, they are called EC2 instance uh, with EBS attached. Um, and then it runs a job on this compute environment that was launched. The job can be a workflow or a command. And then it collects logs and metrics for the job. And then after the job is done, it removes the compute environment. In other words, it terminates the EC2 instance. Um, then what doesn't uh, Tibana do? So it doesn't uh, launch a job to an already running compute environment. Uh, it launches a new EC2 instance for every job. It does not parse a workflow to create and schedule jobs for individual steps. Um, it uh, long, runs the entire workflow on a single EC2 instance. Um, it does not create or use a cluster of EC2 instances that share a disk space. Uh, it uses a single EC2 instance with its own isolated disk space, and it does not share any space with other instances. So basically, uh, when a user submits a job to run a workflow for a given input file, Tibana will create a new instance and then it pulls this workflow to the instance and then runs the job, um, basically. So it doesn't um, parse the workflow into steps or groups of steps and then uh, runs each step in different machines. It, Tibana does not uh, do this. It runs the whole workflow in a single machine. Um, and a common approach is to create a cluster of EC2 instances with a master node and then runs a workflow inside this cluster. Um, again, Tibana doesn't use a cluster approach. It just launches a single instance and runs a workflow there. Um, so then what does it really do? Um, is it uh, still useful? Um, so what it does is basically a lot of miscellaneous tasks around it so that uh, the user doesn't have to manually do those things when, when they run a workflow on the cloud. Um, so first, when it launches an EC2 instance, it um, creates Docker container inside it, which contains the uh, set of scripts called Tibana AWSF, which basically tells the instance what to do. Um, it contains CWL tool to run CWL workflows and also Chromewell to run with all workflows. So then Tibana um, AWS script pulls the workflow files from either a public repo or an S3 bucket, which is a permanent storage on the cloud. And then it will run either CWL2 or Chromewell um, to do the job. Um, so very often a workflow requires its own Docker image that stores uh, the software um, tools and dependencies. And CWL tool and Cromwell will uh, create this Docker container for this specific workflow inside the Tibana AWS Docker container. 
Um, and if the workflow is not uh, CW or widow in its simple bash commands, then Chibana will create a container out of the user specified Docker image uh, without the help of CW2 on Chrome. So the user has different options um, to choose between CW, widow, and uh, bash commands. Um, and so this is basically what it does. And um, the additional things it does. Uh, can help the users. Um, for instance, it can pull the data input files from S3, the permanent storage on the cloud, to the EC2 instance, um, and also puts the output file uh, on S3. It also collects logs from CWL2, Chrome Mail, and other, um, other uh, scripts running on this instance, and then regularly sends the log to S3. It also runs a top command at uh, every one minute interval to collect the information about what processes are running uh, and how much CPU and memory is used. And then it also sends this uh, output to S3 regularly. Um, and in addition, uh, it will uh, report uh, CPU memory and disk usage uh, metrics to AWS CloudWatch. Um, and later, these CloudWatch metrics can be collected uh, and stored in S3 by Tibana. Uh, because the metrics will expire after a certain time point, such as two weeks. Um, so to, to have a more permanent uh, record about the metrics, uh, we keep everything in S3. Um, and then after um, is, this is to instance uh, finishes its job, it will uh, terminate itself. So in a sense, this instance is autonomous. And so we call it autonomous workflow step executor machine. We're awesome. So basically, Tivana uh, launches an awesome instance for every job. And but the other thing that Tivana does is um, to configure the compute environment for the EC2 instance. Um, the three main parameters uh, is uh, CPU main, CPU and memory and disk space. Um, and so basically, uh, Tivana allows the users to specify these three parameters for individual jobs. And so it uh, allows uh, uh, flexibility. And so in Amazon, um, the CPU and memory are determined by the instance type, which is a T3 micro. So user can also specify directly the instance type. And the disk space is basically the size of the EBS uh, volume that's attached to the, the instance. Uh, it, uh, Tivana also allows the users to specify other uh, optional parameters, such as I.O. parameters and whether uh, to use spot instances or on-demand instances, etc. So um, basically, the idea of uh, Tivana is to make life easier for the users. So it does all these uh, tedious miscellaneous works automatically. So for a user, uh, it's just one command, uh, type Tivana run workflow. Uh, with one input file that's basically in JSON format that uh, contains all the specification of what kind of workflow to run and what kind of input file and what are the, the configurations for the, the EC2 instance. Um, Tibana also offers Python API, so the same thing can be done in Python as well. Um, so this is what the input JSON looks like. Um, it's um, basically uh, two uh, parts, arg and config. Uh, the args part con uh, contains information about the workflow. So in this case, it's about CWL workflow. It uh, has the location of the CWL workflow uh, in the CWL version. Um, and then there's input file, uh, the bucket and the object key for the input files and the input parameters uh, for the workflow. Um, and then it also specifies where the output should go to, the bucket name and the key names of the output. And then in, inside the config section, you can specify CPU, memory, and the EBS size. Um, instead of CPU and memory, you can also specify instance type directly. Here you specified whether you want to uh, use spot instance. And then uh, you can also specify which bucket to put your log. Um, so uh, this is a simple example. There are many other options uh, that you can add. Uh, if you're interested, you can check out the Tivana documentation uh, for more options. Um, so basically, the run um, is like that. It's a very simple command. So then do we have to set up anything beforehand in order to run this command? Uh, the answer is yes. We have to deploy something to the AWS cloud, and it has to be done by an admin user. 
Um, so it's also done by a single command, basically Tibana Depot Unicorn. Um, you can uh, specify the name of this uh, Tibana Unicorn that gets deployed. Um, and then uh, the, the number, the names of the buckets that this unicorn should have access to. Um, and you can do the same thing use, using a Python API as well. Um, so then uh, what is deployed exactly when, when you deploy the Tibana unicorn? Um, so is there a cluster of EC2 instances? Uh, no, it is not. Uh, and it is a master server. Uh, no, so Tibana doesn't deploy any server or any instance in the machine. Um, is it setting up the workflow on AWS? Again, it's not. It pulls the workflow on the fly for every job to its uh, corresponding uh, EC2 instance. So then what is uh, deployed? So Tibana uh, uses a serverless architecture. It means no virtual machine or server, server is involved during the deployment. Uh, the only machines that are used is are the ones that are actually running the workflow. Um, so what is deployed is uh, this thing we call Unicorn. Basically, it uh, consists of uh, two AWS Lambda functions, one AWS Step function, and a bunch of IAM uh, entities, which is basically about user permission. Um, and then there's one DynamoDB table, uh, which is used for organizing jobs by job IDs. And so we use one DynamoDB table and share it across different unicorns. Uh, one can uh, deploy multiple unicorns with different settings. So what does it mean that uh, we can deploy multiple unicorns? Um, so as an example here, we have three different unicorns uh, with different user groups, Monty, Dev, and Prod. And so uh, the admin can add users to different user groups using an add user command. Um, and these different user groups have different permissions. Uh, as you can see, the different bucket access uh, is, can be defined for different user groups. So this way, um, can organize um, a different projects with different user permissions uh, or by different stages, such as dev versus prod, again, with different user permissions. And just helping um, the organization of different uh, jobs. So coming back to um, the details, so then what is the AWS Lambda functions and AWS Step functions? Um, so basically AWS Step function uh, consists of states and state transitions. Um, it's just a definition of this structure in JSON format. Um, it doesn't run anything. So when uh, Tibana deploys an AWS Step function, it only deploys this definition and it doesn't cost anything. So basically Tibana has two states uh, run task and check task. And then the state transitions uh, is as in the slide, uh, going from run task to check task and going from check task back to check task. And so this is just the definition. And then AWS Lambda functions, uh, an actual function. Um, so Tibana uses a Python, but it doesn't have to be Python. Um, this function stays on AWS um, normally, but it doesn't cost anything while it's there unless it's invoked. Uh, when it's invoked, it can run instantly without launching any machine. And the users will pay only for the duration of the run. It could be minutes, seconds, or milliseconds. Um, but it has a time runtime limit of 15 minutes. And it also has limited memory. Um, so we don't run uh, the actual workflows on AWS Lambda. We run everything on the EC2 instance. But we use Lambdas for uh, very short jobs, such as uh, running uh, launching the instance and checking the log. Um, and the Lambda function can be invoked by a step function, so that's how we connect those two. So how Tibana actually uses uh, AWS step function and Lambda function to run a job. So when a job is submitted, then um, an instantiation of this step function is created. It's called an execution. Um, it's basically the same uh, structure uh, based on the same template that's already defined. And so in Tibana, uh, we have two states. So then the first state run task will invoke the corresponding run task Lambda function, which will launch the awesome EC2 instance with uh, the right uh, input uh, JSON. And then once it launches the instance, the Lambda uh, exits. Uh, and then the awesome instance will start doing its job, including downloading the input files and workflow and then running the workflow. And then the instance will uh, regularly send log to S3. 
And in the meantime, um, the state uh, check task will invoke uh, the check task lambda function, which will check uh, the logs on the S3 bucket and make sure that it's still running. And in the meantime, uh, the awesome EC2 instance can um, again send the log, continue its job. So this uh, check task and the awesome instance are running independently. Um, and then at some point, uh, the EC2 instance finishes the job, it sends the last log to S3, um, and then it terminates itself. And then the next time the check task uh, runs, um, it will uh, know that this job has finished successfully. And then so it will call the whole execution a success. So this uh, whole process is repeated for every job. Um, and it can be parallelized. We have run uh, thousands of jobs um, simultaneously. Um, and they don't interact with one another. They run independently. And the AWS step function allows you to check which uh, executions are still running and which executions have succeeded or failed. So Tibana uses that feature of the AWS step function. So after um, the, the run has finished, um, Tibana creates uh, a metrics report in the HTML format for every job. Uh, so the first part of the HTML uh, includes this table that summarizes CPU, memory, disk utilization, and runtime. Um, the user can also uh, manually add the cost after some time uh, using the Tibana API. And, um, and the next part of the, the HTML uh, contains uh, this uh, more detailed plot uh, that shows how CPU, memory, and disk changes over time and allows the user to analyze the, the pipeline work for run. So here, for example, uh, we can see that the first 80 minutes uh, was using almost 100% of CPU and about 70% of memory. And so the user can uh, say, okay, maybe <clears throat> um, this part of the pipeline is using the resources efficiently. However, the last 30 minutes, uh, you can see that the CPU memory utilization dropped uh, significantly. And so we're wasting a lot of resources. And here we can also check the disk utilization is less than 60%. So then uh, next time we run the same pipeline, maybe we can assign smaller amount of EBS. EBS. And so the user can uh, look at this graph and uh, improve the resource allocation or redesign the pipeline. Um, and to look at more detail, um, uh, the report also contains a per process CPU and memory plot. So for instance here, uh, you can see that um, the part that uses a very small portion of CPU and memory uh, corresponds to uh, these two processes, uh, mostly uh, PBGZIP and the VCF validator. And so the user can uh, decide, uh, maybe we will split this part into a separate machine uh, that's cheaper and uses uh, has less CPU and memory. So it, it helps uh, the user to uh, decide, uh, make this kind of decision. So um, that's uh, pretty much what Tibana does. Um, and because Tibana is uh, basically Python API, uh, uh, it, it allows uh, extension. So we have um, Tibana Pony and Tibana Zebra, which is basically an extension of Tibana Unicorn um, that uh, interacts with data portals, Odeon data portal and CGAP data portal, respectively. Um, so uh, we have added some functionalities to interact and communicate uh, and create and uh, read metadata information from these data portals. And so something similar can also be done for probably other data portals, uh, potentially. And there is also integration with SnakeMake workflow management a tool. Um, so a SnakeMake software will read SnakeMake workflow and, and um, it can assign steps and groups of steps as jobs and then can run Tibana as a backend to submit uh, different steps to different uh, machines. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have it for CW and Riddle yet. So uh, hopefully sometime in the future, we will have this kind of feature. Um, and lastly, I want to show uh, you this uh, nice diagram that was drawn by our graphic designer, Shannon. Uh, this summarizes in, in one figure, basically, what Tibana does at the cloud. Okay, and thank you for your attention.